Hi, this is Dr. Mercola. And you know, for the last two decades, I've been committed to helping you and your family take control of your health. But there's been a recent development that actually happens to threaten my ability to do this. Last month, specifically July 21st, the Center for Science and Public Interest, or CSPI, issued a press release and testified in Senate hearings on the topic of COVID-19 scams. The press release contained lies, fabrications, and a reckless disregard for truth in an attempt to put an end to me and this website. So what did they say about me? They said that I know that they conveniently failed to mention that I'm a board certified physician, falsely claimed that at least 22 vitamins, supplements, and other products available for sale on my website can prevent, treat, or cure COVID-19 infection. Now, CSPI's president, Peter Lorre, who just happens to be an ex-FDA associate commissioner, also stated that I'm now exploiting consumers' justifiable fear about contracting COVID-19, falsely claiming that everything from fermented licorice powder to zinc can help prevent or treat disease. Now, these are some pretty hefty accusations to make, but luckily, CSPI has provided an appendix of illegal claims to easily verify the evidence they've uncovered, which you can simply view at the link on this page that accompanies the video. So let's start with a direct quote from their president, Peter Lorre. You might think he would be very careful with untruthful statements that could bring significant liability to him and CSPI. If you look at the appendix and refer to the fermented licorice powder sold under the Soul Spring brand that you will find in the Mercola market, you can see that there's no claims. I challenge you to find any claims about COVID on this product. You can see that it is grown organically and biodynamically certified and fermented to enhance bioavailability, which is just happens to be great for seasoning dishes, smoothies, baked goods, or simply dissolving it in hot water for a refreshing tea. If you want, just pause the video and take all the time you need to review the copy that was never changed and when you can easily confirm by using the Wayback Machine archive. I'm certain that you'll agree that there are simply no COVID claims there. But let's continue and follow CSPS column where it finds a link associated to claims. If you examine this article that I wrote, you'll find it was written about a compound from licorice called glycerizin that includes 19 references, including the Lancet. And you know what you won't find anywhere on the page? Any product or product advertisement. So just what does this published study in Lancet have to say? Specifically, quote, of all the compounds, glycerizin was the most active in inhibiting replication of the SARS-associated virus, unquote. So, is this noteworthy to you? Do you find it interesting and relevant? Am I talking about any product on this page? Do you see any product ads on this page? Can you find any mention of fermented licorice powder on this page as taken as a direct reference from CSPI's president, Peter Lorre? It simply just doesn't exist. It's a complete lie and total fabrication. Every product in this CSPI's false allegations goes through the same bogus rearrangement of information, a product with no claims and articles with no products. So what sort of intentional and reckless misrepresentation is going on here? What kind of legal charlatan would do something so reckless? Well, just so happens, CSPI is the right charlatan for the job. For the last 23 years, since I've been online, I fought against neurotoxic fluoride in water. I was the first physician journalist to alert the world about the dangers of Vioxx in 1999. I've also campaigned against the dangers of agrochemical companies and I funded the original signature gathering uh, and to label GMOs in California back in 2012, which actually catalyzed a whole flurry of legislative actions to label GMO. So in addition to that, I've also fought the long battle against the use of mercury in dental fillings. Now, I've also warned about the overuse of antibiotics, not only humans, but more importantly, the dangers of consuming them in CAFO meats. And that's where about 80% of the antibiotics are used in animals. 
And finally, I funded research and have been one of the first physician journalists that brought major awareness to the vitamin D deficiency way back in 2000. 20 years ago, I've been creating public awareness of the importance of vitamin D, especially with the COVID challenge. There's never been such a coordinated assessment of lies and censorship in the history of America as there is today. The brainwashing, social media surveillance, coercion, and destruction of dissenters is simply accelerating. If you want to learn more about this process, you can either watch the video or read my series called The Ghost in the Machine and you'll see a comp comprehensive review of what is essentially the components of the new world order, the empire of billionaires. So would you believe CSPI is actually bankrolled by billionaires? Well, you will certainly find the Rockefeller Foundation as a group that has funded CSPI. And where you find Rockefeller, you typically find Bill Gates. Of course, CSPI is partnered with Bill Gates' agrochemical PR group called the Alliance for Science. Actually, it's a pretty clever name with the alliteration. CSPI shares their head of GMOs and biotechnology with Bill Gates funded Alliance for Science as their associate director of legal affairs. Now CSPI has a pretty nefarious history that they seek to hide and most likely you're not aware of it, but they previously fought us against GMO labeling for many years. Uh, apparently they prefer the GMO soy and corn that blanket the United States while getting drenched in toxic pesticides, washing synthetic fertilizer runoff into our fresh water and draining the aquifers for irrigation. Some advocacy working with Bill Gates to promote the agrochemical companies, wouldn't you say? But on top of all that, you'll never guess what I believe the worst thing is about CSPI. They were responsible for the major campaign that led Americans to consume trans fat. In fact, they celebrated their victories by converting Americans from healthy, saturated fats to trans fats, calling it a great boon to Americans' arteries. How many hundreds of thousands, millions, or more likely tens of millions of people developed heart disease and actually died because of CSPI? They should be brought before a tribunal and prosecuted for crimes against humanity. What's even more disgusting is CSPI has deceptively erased their deadly campaign from their history books to make them look like heroes. And if you look at this timeline that they put together below, you'll see how they completely eliminate any mention of their activities before 1993. Isn't it ironic that CSPI greatly contributed to the very disease that they spent the next two decades raising funds for to lobby against the trans fat that they had initially encouraged us to consume. But what else can you expect from charlatans like CSPI? The people funded by the Rockefellers, Bloomberg, partnered with Gates in taking money from the pharmaceutically funded American Heart Association. Maybe CSPI is just angry. I won't let them get away with hiding their deadly history. Or maybe they're just sad about their complete irrelevance. And as you can see, is generated from a relatively objective ranking called Alexa that uh, puts our site uh, in the top 10,000 sites in the world with respect to number of views. And this is despite being handicapped by being removed from Google search engines, which essentially cut down our Google search by 99.9%. CSPI doesn't have that handicap and you can see the great difference there in, in the rankings. So if you find this egregious behavior of CSPI as atrocious as I do, then please share this information with everyone you know and get ready for more. There's going to be so much more to this story as I continue to defend myself against their actions.